Hi, we are Goshen Middle School, and today we're going to talk to you guys about social and emotional learning at Goshen Middle School and how we do things. My name is Kelly Deneau. I'm Angela Clark. I'm Katie Webster. And I'm Kelsey Ryback. We look forward to showing you some good stuff. Our presentation will showcase how our school has transformed with a school-wide holistic teaching approach. The initiative offers daily social and emotional support, intervention, and competition, school-wide competitions, STEM, and formative instructional practices. In our presentation, we're going to have four categories of how we reach this approach. So I'm going to speak about the social and emotional learning. So throughout our slides, we'll talk about tribe time, which is our advisory, our warrior way, our PBIS system, and our house competition. I'm going to talk to you guys today about beyond academics and basic needs. Um, Angela's going to be sharing this role with me, and we're going to be talking about the Hope Squad. She's going to talk about the Hope Squad. Um, we have an awesome little food pantry, the Loft, our free store, our Handle with Care initiative, and of course, our super exciting facility dog program and how we've partnered with Circle Tail. And then I will talk to you about how we um, engage students and teachers in um, with interactive Google Slides and how we track data with with that and getting students involved in their data tracking um, all through interactive Google slideshows. Tons of great free resources. <laughs> so one of the programs that we have here at Goshen Middle School is called Hope Squad. Hope Squad is a peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer based program that allows students to find a trusted adult in their life to speak to, whether they're having problems here at school, problems at home. We want kids to be able to talk to adults and communicate with adults their needs. Um, one of the videos that I'm going to share with you that's shared within this slideshow today is how Help Squad started. It started in Utah because at one point Utah had the highest suicide rates in the nation. Um, when I first heard about Hope Squad and I watched this video, it was something that I was really excited um, to learn about because our kids need help beyond what we give in our classrooms. And sometimes they're not always willing to come to talk to adults. So. Hope Squad is one of those uh, programs that train kids to encourage kids to go seek out a trusted adult. Um, another um, program that we partner with here in the Cincinnati area is called Grant Us Hope. They are our local Hope Squad initiative, and all of our training for Hope Squad is received through Grant Us Hope. So you would have adult advisors, they would go to Grant Us Hope, they would train us, and they tell us how uh, kids are to interact with one another, and they also give us the program and the scripts that we use with our kids to train them to help other kids seek out trusted adults. The other initiative that I'm gonna talk about today is called a multi-tier support system. So again, this is part of the social emotional aspect of kids and mental health. Um, multi-tier support system is something new that we are starting with our MMGW groups here at Goshen Middle School today, or this year. And um, we have, in that system, we have started a dashboard for all of our teachers to use, as well as a flowchart to kind of communicate between the grade levels. And the flowchart was given to us from the book, The Startup Guide, um, the MTTS Startup Guide by Jessica and John Hannigan. Um, within this support system, it lists every resource that we have available to our kids through Goshen Middle School. And as we started going through the resources, we realized that we are up to 17 different resources here at Goshen Middle School that we have to offer to our kids, such as Child Focus, Hope Squad, our Loft, our um, little food pantry, which are some of the things that I'm gonna showcase on this next slide. So another um, MMGW is a group is our basic needs support. We have a basic needs survey, which will also tie in with our MTSS. We also have teachers that have students write about the hardest things that kids have ever had to deal with. So we as teachers can see what's going on in kids' lives. And we know that here in Goshen, we do have kids with lots of basic needs not being met at home. So we offer the loft, which is a free store that has food, clo or, I'm sorry, clothing, hygiene products, and school supplies. And then we have a little food pantry, which is a little pantry of non-perishable items that anybody in the community who may be in need can come drive up and grab something for to eat that night. As you can see right here, this is Goshen's Little Food Pantry. It sits right out here in front of our school and it's stocked full of goodies and students can access that day or night or even on the weekends. And here is our backup stock that we keep the Little Food Pantry 
filled up with. It's mostly microwavable meals that would be easy for students to cook themselves in case their parents aren't home. Macaroni and cheese, ramen noodles, Chef Boradie, stuff like that. Next, we're gonna check out the loft, which is our free store. See, we have plenty of coats, and it's really just a storage space for all the things that a basic needs that a student may or may not have or could have access to. We have hats and gloves, clothing items, and one of our amazing teachers has taken upon themselves to organize this by sizes. And you have your basic toiletries, backpacks, some shoes even. We have boy clothes, girl clothes, lots more backpacks. Just tons of stuff that they, that we can get for them if they need it. School supplies. And all of those marks on the wall indicate how many times somebody has been helped. We decided to move locations to talk to you about our next area of social emotional learning, which is our advisory time. We call our advisory time tribe time, hence because we are the warriors. This is a block of time that takes place for half an hour every morning. We start our day in advisory. We find it very beneficial to check in with that teacher that his students build really good trust and appreciation with to start off the day. It's also a great way to help with attendance. Sometimes we'll reach out to students and try to get them into school before their academic day starts. The main purpose of tribe time is just for every student to have a positive relationship with an adult advocate. The best part about tribe is that we um, use our, see our kids for three years in a row. So I started with sixth grade this year. I will have them in seventh grade and eighth grade, and then I will start over. So that's three years that a student gets to stay with the same teacher. Another piece of our advisory, and I'll show you in just a moment our schedule and what we work on during that time. It is created for the staff. But another big component is we have a whole house competition. Each tribe is put into one of our Ivy League schools. And we compete in competitions either weekly or on a basis when something comes up, such as Spirit Week. You'll see in the link that I attach, but also we record our GPA every week. We track attendance. We track behavior. It's a way to kind of promote a family feeling, and so kids are involved, and they have a piece of involvement in the school. So maybe they don't play a sport. They're not in a club, but they're all in a house, which we find to be very beneficial. So this links I was talking about, if advisory is something you do and you just want to freshen it up, or if you're really focusing on social and emotional learning, then these will be a benefit to you. The first one is our lesson plan schedule. We divide our lessons. We started this semester by doing them by grade level. So you'll see Tuesdays and Thursdays are when we focus on our social and emotional learning. We have a program that we follow. Mondays are when we focus in on our GPA, our grade check. We also set a goal to have everybody silently reading in the entire school during that time after we've checked grades. On Wednesday, we read a book as an entire grade level. Every grade level is reading something different in their tribe. And Fridays, we're either catching up on things throughout the week, or this year we started a tradition of a school-wide game, a kahoot, a quizzes, some way to earn popsicles. It's become quite competitive. And then I also attached, just so you could see our house competitions, is the third link. If you were curious about how we keep track or the different competitions, that's all there for you. I also just wanted to show you before my part ends about what some students are saying. We just did a quick poll and students were talking about the benefit. You'll see a theme throughout these quotes about meeting students that they aren't in class with. Unfortunately, our schedule, our students stay together and travel in a pod throughout the day. So tribe is an opportunity to meet kids they might not have class time with, which has been really helpful in building relationships that don't have to do with just um, you're in a certain team that you're on, but you're in tribe together. So they're getting to meet different kids they wouldn't normally meet. All right, I am here to talk to you guys today about a new program we have just piloted this year. And as you can guess, this is our facility dog, Meg. Everyone loves Meg, um, but who wouldn't, right? We get to have a dog at school. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit today about how this all came about. She's going to lay just right next to me. Hopefully you guys can kind of see her. Yeah, let's position that so you can just see how calm she is and how she is trained to... Um, just be that support for whatever we need support for. Um, look at her yearbook picture. Just sorry, that's super cute. She got her yearbook picture taken. Um, Meg comes to us from Circle Tail, which is an organization that I'm going to talk about in just a second. Let me explain this slide just very quickly. Um, that way we can move on. Uh, first of all, she has an Instagram account. It's Meg's Graham GMS, and it's over there. You can take a look. 
Um, in the actual slideshow, you guys can play this video and you can just see all the amazing examples of how many times Meg has been interacting with our students, our staff. Everybody in this building has been exposed to her and it's just been life-changing. You know those moments in teaching where sometimes things can get a little bit old and you just need something to re-spark and reignite your passion? This was it for me. Um, and if they're getting a facility dog is something that you're interested in, I'm gonna tell you all about it right now. So here's the next slide that I'd like to speak about. Um, a little bit of background. Uh, we got Meg from Circle Tail Incorporated. They are basically a nonprofit and they train service animals for um, people that need like one on one dogs um, and like hearing dogs, sight dogs. Um, but sometimes they find that these dogs are a little bit too social and they still need a job, but they need a job where they can just be with everybody and they can just make everyone happy. And that they become this facility dogs. Uh, Circle Tail um, is, basically they, they provide these dogs with very high intense training and they donate these dogs at no cost to the owner um, and no cost to the schools and the programs besides adoption fees. And I can't imagine another organization that is better than that. Um, they have done that to 15 other schools in our area. It is becoming more of a thing. Um, so it's definitely something that you can check out there. A website is linked right there. It's also something that's great to donate to as well. Uh, some of Meg's duties, what, she, what do we do with her? Um, that video on the other slide can show just a lot of examples, but some of the things, hallway greetings, counseling sessions, classroom visits. Uh, she is utilized a lot in the special education classrooms. Um, unfortunately, we had a teacher pass away this year. It was awful. And she was part of our crisis counseling team. And because we were associated with Circle Tail, they also sent in four other dogs. So having that connection too is just a, a great service. Um, and she's been great for our staff as well. We love having her. No one can walk through the hallway and not smile when you see a dog. Um, this initiative has just been designed to help support physical, emotional, and cognitive needs of the students. Um, and it really has. Uh, there's so many different examples when her on-demand um, presence has just fixed a situation with no other, no, no, no other um, interventions needed. She, just her presence or having a dog around can change a lot. Uh, something else I wanted to show you how we're utilizing Meg in fourth quarter. Now that she's been introduced to our school and she knows the routines, uh, something that we're going to try fourth quarter, uh, since at the end of the day I have a little bit, I'm a handler for Meg, so she stays with me throughout the day. And then we have another person that is trained. So you can have as many people trained as you want to and, you know, utilize her around the school. But something we're gonna try, this is a little QR code, um, gonna hang around the school. It says, having a hard time, need some comfort, make, see, need some Meg comfort, they can just use their phones, scan the QR code, and then a form will pop up. And they'll fill out the form, and it will directly email me, and then I will pull that student at the end of the day for just a quick intervention. If it's just a quick reset, reset, we're just gonna do like five minutes. They can say hello, I'll send them back to class. But that'll give me some time to kind of assess the situation. If it seems deeper than just a five minute thing, then I can just go ahead and refer them to counseling or child focus. So hopefully um, we'll let you know how that goes, but if you are interested in anything like that, all of this is linked so you have access to it. The last part of our holistic approach at GMS is incorporating interactive Google Slides in tribe time or interactive Google Forms for a hoop squad um, or for in the actual classroom. Uh, weekly agendas we have, everything that we use, we try to tie it to some interactive Google pieces. Um, we all use Google Classroom here, whether it's for tribe time, hoop squad, or our um, core academic classes. So I want to show you some different templates that I've created and linked here that you can actually make a copy of for your own classrooms. Um, there's pictures of what you would be clicking on as a preview, but um, when you get this, if you just click on the box, 
and you follow the link, it'll allow you to create a copy for your classroom. So these templates um, are kind of for different areas of the classroom for different content areas. This first one is a student reflection portfolio. So our team made this for students to fill out for a um, student-led conference. And basically what's included is um, a slide for each of their classes that they had. And then on the actual slides, they would answer questions that that teacher wanted them to reflect on. So for example, what your grade was, what your growth score and different assessments were at the time, um, what your you know weakness is in that class, what your strength is in that class, and what you've learned for that quarter. So we had students uh, fill that out for conferences and then go over those with their parents at conferences. So that was a really powerful piece, and it was interactive for all students to click through and link their, their work. The second template that's included is called the an Investigate the Teacher, Investigate the Student Assignment. So we use this at the beginning of the year. Some teachers uh, use this at the beginning of the year to get to know their students better. Um, so it goes through a an interactive um, locker that you can make. Um, so the teacher, I made one, and then the students will make one. Um, there's a poster wall that they make. There are some different facts, and then we investigate one another. So then you have to use um, some, you know, evidence to show. Well, what do I get from Miss? Mrs. Webster's locker, uh, that she loves the color purple or that she has, you know, cats at home or whatever. So that is in a, a beginning of the year activity. This middle activity is an example reading activity. So this is specific to anyone cre uh, starting a new text in their classroom. It's called a tea party activity. Um, basically, there's a lot of words that are taken from the text, mostly vocabulary words, that tell the reader something about the story before you read. So this is a pre-reading activity to get students interested in the reading. Um, there are Google Forms in that one as well that's linked. Um, so we try to incorporate all of our assignments. If you do a Google slideshow like this, um, the interactive piece is that you can click on all the links and all the pictures, and everything for the assignment is in one spot, which has been really helpful we've found for our students. Um, the bottom assignment here is an example of a weekly agenda. So every teacher here at GMS has some sort of daily or weekly agenda that is posted and that teachers um, communicate with parents and guardians and the students. So students know exactly what's expected of them each week, say they're being absent, they know they're going to be absent, or they can always um, look backwards and ahead um, for some cases too. So that's an example of a weekly agenda that teachers use. Um, at the top, we have a digital writer's notebook. So this is for any um, interactive notebook that you might have in a math classroom or an ELA classroom or a social studies classroom, science, any classroom where you would use a notebook. We created a digital copy. Um, and basically, the notebook that's included has different tabs. And the students would click on a tab, and it's linked to a slide where you can um, go to that section. So for example, there's a journal section and you click on the blue tab that says journal writing, it'll go straight to the journal writing and students can see um, their slides. They have the teacher's copy which has the prompt um, and then they have their own copy where they type in their answers. That can go through vocabulary, um, book lists that they want to keep. It can go through any math activities, science activities, social studies activities. So however you would divide up your um, class notebook, now you can make it a digital copy. Uh, finally, there's a copy of a digital classroom. Um, so this one, if you click on the link, you'll see that all the book titles that are in my actual classroom, there are pictures of the book titles, and those pictures are linked to a, a website called Goodreads, and it takes them to a summary. So students can easily pick out their books that they want to read instead of just standing at my bookshelf inside my classroom like what do I even where do I even start so this is um, organized by genre and this is just like a sneak peek that you can keep and make a copy of and change to fit your classroom library if you have one
So those are templates that are interactive. And then on this next slide, um, I actually made some Screencastify videos that can teach you how to create your own uh, interactive Google Slideshow. So each video, if you click on the box, again, it goes to a uh, Screencastify video of me explaining how to add a background and do all those things to make your activities interactive. So this one, um, how to add a background on your slides whether it be a fake classroom or um, a field, whatever you want your backgrounds to be, that's how to add a background. Um, how to create drag and drop activities. We do a lot of those when we're talking about test prep because th those, you know, some of those questions are drag and drop and it's inter it's more interactive for students, more engaging. Um, you Using unique fonts, this is um, something that I figured out how to go online and download fonts for free and then use them, actually use them in the Google Slides. Um, the middle one here is how to publish in presentation mode. So then your parents or students would only see the Google Slides in a presentation mode versus seeing all of the extra things around your slides. Um, this is mostly for weekly agendas, announcements, things like that, that you don't want students to actually write on or type on. The bottom one is how to add transparent pictures so there's not a background on things um, that you want to download from the internet and use like a clip art. There's no background, so how to add transparent uh, pictures through a, a outside website. Um, this one is how to add links and create buttons. So a button would be if you clicked on um, this push pin, for example, then it might take you to a specific slide you want to link it to. Or, um, for example, on the student portfolio for their personal reflections, the files were all buttons. So they would click on the math tab and it would take you to the, their math slide. So that's how to create buttons. Um, how to digitize worksheets. So in the um, a slide, you might put a worksheet there as the background, so then students can't delete questions or delete, um, accidentally remove different uh, blanks that you have or boxes that you have. You would make it the background of your slide and, and create text boxes over top. So that's how to digitize your worksheets. And finally, how to add your Bitmoji. So if you're interested in having a Bitmoji and wondering how to add that and create um, your assignments, Google Classroom, um, you know, announcements, like you can add your Bitmoji to a lot of different things. So that one goes over, over your Bitmoji. So definitely check out these videos to help you get started uh, making your own templates for things that are personalized to you and your school. And finally, we just want to say thank you for um, listening to our presentation. And um, if you want to see our Google Slides presentation and actually access our links where you can watch our videos, um, download those templates, please use our bit.ly that is listed here. And if you have any questions for any of us, um, our emails are listed below. And that's all. Thanks, you. Thanks again.